Are you having a difficult time setting your goals? Well, stay tuned. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eli's dad from Project Eli, where we educate, lead, and inspire. Today, we're going to talk about how you can get yourself started with goal setting. And more importantly than that, how you can actually fulfill your goals. Here's the key element to goal setting and fulfilling. Are you ready? Here it is. You've got to combine your passions with your habits. You must make your dream crystal clear so that you'll take the massive action required in order to achieve it. And once you do that, you'll find that action enhances and expands your clarity. Massive results require massive action. I want to give you a couple of, of different examples in my life where that has most certainly been the case. The first one is when I was a junior in high school, having not made the varsity, have been the last person cut from the varsity basketball team, I made a strong commitment to myself that not only was I going to make the team, but I was going to be a starter on the team, which was difficult considering that the people that I had to beat out were starters already on the team from the year before. Wow, that was going to be a difficult road to hoe. I had two separate dreams, goals, ambitions towards that end. One, and keep in mind I'm a junior in high school, so what do juniors in high school guys think about? Well, one of them was being a really good basketball player and starting on the team, and the other was, and I'd be less than honest if I didn't tell you this, was to be more visible to members of the opposite gender. I know at this particular time in your life, Eli, that the two major concerns are basketball and girls. That's a natural thing. Believe me, I know. Okay? So I put those two passions together. I could, I would visualize hearing myself being announced, and in the starting lineup, here he is, Eli's dad. All right? I could visualize that. Every single day when I woke up, I would say to myself, I'm going to be a starter. I would look at pictures of basketball players and from Sports Illustrated, get my mind straight to motivate myself. I would see myself with a beautiful girlfriend. You know, I mean, these were the things that got me going every single day in that summer between my sophomore and my junior year where I worked my butt off getting myself in shape, shooting the basketball, playing all the time, doing all these things because I could envision the final outcome. If you have a strong enough why, you can do any how. It'll work for you that way. Let me give you a different example. My passion with this particular channel is to pass down to Eli the things that I know as a mentor. Unfortunately, because of our age difference, I probably am not going to be in a great position to do that for his entire life when, when he's growing the most, you know, in his 20s and 30s. So that's why I made the decision to have something permanent on YouTube where Eli could go back and take a look at it and still have it even if I'm not around to help him. That was a major undertaking. That was a passion of mine. And, and in addition to that, of course, is to pay back, was to pay back my mentors who told me, you are obligated to pass along the information that we've given to you to other people because these are things they don't teach people in school that are essential for people to become a success. What did I have to do for this channel? Well. I knew the material, I knew what I had to do, I wrote everything down, I had virtually a hundred pages written already of, of things I was originally just going to give Eli the paper, but I thought to myself, that venue is not going to be the most productive. 
what is the most productive when you can see when you can hear that's why I decided to do this video channel so there would be something there for Eli to go and take a look at and when he had a question and these things come up the same things come up technology changes but philosophy stayed the same you know so you, you, you have to perform the same acts you may be using a you know a computer instead of a pencil and paper but you're still performing the same functions and the key thing you know that that I had to do because I don't know anything about the internet is I had to find some people that were going to be able to help me how do I go about doing that where am I going to find these people I just went around and started asking people telling them what I wanted to do and I got a zillion people that told me no, some that weren't capable. And then I finally found somebody that was in a position to help me. Because I didn't know how to do that, but I just went out and just started doing it. It's the same thing as, as when you want to get into shape. You know, you can go and say, well, I have to get a personal trainer. Or you can just throw on a pair of sneakers and go out and start running. Get started. The key thing is to get to the starting line. What gets you to the starting line is combining your passion with your habits. You know, and the thing that you have to watch out for are distractions. A distraction is any action that pulls you away from what you intend to do. The key word here being pull. All right? You want, when you have your goals, when you have your dreams, when you have your objectives, you want something that's going to pull you to them. I'll give you an example. There's a significant difference in a person saying, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds. I want to lose some weight. There's a difference between saying that than a, a lady that's going to be a bride in two months that says, I want to fit into that bridal gown, so I have to lose some weight what is she doing? She's envisioning the wedding ceremony. She's envisioning seeing herself in the bridal gown, being a beautiful bride and having a fabulous wedding. You see the difference? You got to combine your passions with your habits. And the opposite of distraction isn't focus. It's traction. Both of those words come from the Latin, from the Latin root, which means to pull. Both words also end in the same six-letter word, action. That reminds you that both traction and distraction are actions that you decide to take and not things that randomly happen to you. So, get yourself some clarity. Come figure out what you're passionate about. Combine your passion with your habits. And work from that. I mean, we've talked about combining habits together. One of the examples, as an example that I gave you uh, before, was, you know, before you go to sleep, you want to have uh, an outcome that you want to achieve that you need some help with. And you, help, you want to get some help from the infinite mind. So you want to visualize the final outcome, not the things you've done that haven't worked, but the final outcome because you want to leave the runway clear for the infinite mind, the infinite partner, to give you some solutions through intuition or events or circumstances that you can't control or plan for. You want to get the help of the infinite partner. So to help you to do that, I suggested that while you're brushing your teeth, the, one of the things in washing your face and getting ready for bed, that while you're doing that, you start thinking about the final outcome that you want to achieve. So then when you're finished with that and you start to go to bed, you've already started that process. So you've got to figure out ways to start that process. Combine the two. Connect two things together that will get you going. That is the key to being somebody that su successfully makes goals and successfully achieve goals. You've got to combine your passion with your habits. And because we will never end a meeting on a philosophical note, 
Let's get out there and take charge! I'm Eli's dad.